Hey, Greg. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Well, thanks so much for joining us, taking some time to answer some questions that uh, we've gotten from uh, some of our members through a member survey, some through our chapter leaders and a chapter call. And just kind of in general, we kind of heard uh, some questions and concerns from fans out there. I think this is a fantastic opportunity to uh, get them the information, at least answer these questions. And a lot of them are for you. And so, uh, I don't know, we really appreciate you being here. And yeah. Yeah. You bet. I mean, I remember when we talked a couple months back, you know, we, we talked about you know, any, any time we can get together, anything you, you need us to do, we're willing to help out. And I, I think this is a good step in, um, in, in showing that. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Well, uh, most people know you currently as a one-year uh, manager for the U.S. national team. You also played for the national team, mm -hmm. played in one World Cup on the roster for another. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... Um, but really appreciate you being here. Um, first question uh, that we had is, American soccer made its name by hustle and outworking opponents. Uh, how do you plan on bringing that grit and unquenchable desire to win back to the national team? So I think that um, we did a lot of work with the team in, in terms of digging into our heritage and, and figuring out exactly what makes American special, but American soccer players special. And, um, and part of what made us successful over these last years has been that determination, that relentlessness to keep going and, and play against all odds and, and, um, and outwork opponents, outcompete opponents. You know, I remember games you know, where we're down a man and, and in the heat and it just doesn't matter, we keep going. So I think the, the, the first part of that is, is identifying with the group and saying, this is what makes us special. And, th and then the second thing is demanding that and training that and, and making sure we're putting players in environments where they know that's important to bring. And, you know, it's um, when I look back at the year and I look back at the games, um, you know, I think there's some games where maybe we didn't bring that enough and then some games where we absolutely did. And, um, you know, one thing I always want to keep in mind with this group is it's a young group. It's a group that doesn't have much international experience, and that's one thing we're building, but that is certainly a key component to our success. So into that, what is, you know, we've heard a lot about um, uh, your style and a lot of conversation out there. What is your vision and style of play that you want to implement for the national team? So I believe, you know, sometimes, you know, with that hard work and determination and, and, and having that one side of it, I don't want us to get unbalanced and think we can only do that side. I mean, we have players at Chelsea right now. We have players in, you know, playing in the Bundesliga. We, we're developing talents, and I, we want to take advantage of that talent pool. And um, and so, ha having said that, what we're talking about is being proactive in games, being able to keep the ball in games, being able to dominate the opponent with the ball, being able to disorganize the opponent with the ball. Um, all of that leading to goal scoring opportunities because we want to score goals. Um, first and foremost, we want to entertain the fans by, by scoring goals. And um, so being proactive with the ball, disorganizing the opponent um, with the ball to create goal scoring opportunities is important to us. So next question was, um, do you believe uh, the players that are coming up into the system, into the team, are they, uh, do they fit that system well? And the question we see a lot as well that goes with that is, do you ever see changing up that system based on the players that are called up and the opponent? Yeah, yeah so, I mean, I like that part of the question because I think it gives, it gives me the opportunity to speak in greater detail. Um, you know, there's always, I understand where we are in world football, right? So for, for us to have this vision of, um, you know, using the ball to disorganize the opponent and create goal scoring opportunities, it, it sounds great, right? But you're playing Brazil. And that's, not, that's a very difficult task. So now you work backwards and you say, okay, how can we be successful in this particular game? What are the strengths of the opponent? What are the weaknesses of the opponent? And how can we take advantage of that? The Canada game is a, is a very good example. The Canada game um, at home, mm -hmm. right? We identified a clear weakness of, of um, Canada with their structure, you know, playing a, a, a diamond in midfield, pushing their fullbacks high or, you know, or a 4-1-3-2 and the fullbacks high, which meant there was going to be a lot of space on the side of the field when, when they lose the ball. And we wanted to exploit that space. And that's an example of, okay, so when they have the ball, 
now we can, we can hurt them in, in different ways. And, that, and that's what we look for. So we're always open to, um, to exploiting the weaknesses of the opponent. But on, this, on the other side of it, we want to continue to develop our style of play. And, and we know that's important because, by the way, we're playing a lot of teams that we're going to be able to execute our style of play. When you think about the dynamic of U.S. soccer, half the teams we play are going to be better than us and half the teams are going to be worse than us. And it's, it's for us being able to, to navigate both of those opponents that will be important. Hmm. So with the, you have a roster coming out soon for January camps. What, what's your process for um, selecting those players and teams and then prioritize with the, the different types of games and camps and uh, stuff that we have? And, um, and yeah, what is that process? Yeah, so uh, there's, there's a couple different ways we look at it. And, um, you know, the January camp, we know right off the bat there's going to be a number of players that won't be able to be selected because they're in their season in Europe. So th that's right off the bat that in January camp, that's what we're dealing with. When you're talking about a friendly game, right, there's, there's perhaps a different set of parameters. When you're talking about competition games, there's another set. When you're talking about tournaments, there's another set. But in general, what we're looking for is who's informed. Right? That's, a, that's really important to us. The second thing we're saying is, what, is there anything specific about this opponent, opponent that personnel is going to help us be successful in this game? And then the third thing is, um, is player availability. Are players injured? Where are we on the depth chart with these guys? So there's a number of different factors that come into to choosing the squad um, for a given camp. In general, for this camp coming up is now we, we had a year to look at the player pool. We had a year to look at, um, evaluate a lot of players. And now can we use this January camp to evaluate a second set of players, another group of players, to increase that pool that we've, that we've um, been exposed to, um, to a greater number? So speaking of after a year on the job, what do you think you did well as a coach? And where are you looking to get better at in 2020 here? I think, we did a, I think we did a good job of developing very good team chemistry. Um, when I think about the evolution of the group, when I think about um, the group that, that we started working with, when I, when I think about them in the beginning to now, it's night and day in terms of team spirit, team chemistry, togetherness. The group has done a really good job of bonding and, and you see new relationships that have formed. And so I think that's been great. When I think about um, you know, the, the, the play, um, I think we did a good job of establishing a baseline for how we want to play. It wasn't always perfect, no question about it. But the guys showed me that they're brave, right? that they're resilient, and that they, they really want to execute what we're looking for. So that was really important. So those are some really positive things. Def defensively, our, our record was good this year. We, we let up very few goals, um, you know, very few chances. Our expected goals was good. We created a number of chances, so those things were pretty positive. I think the consistency was an issue mm. at times. I think, um, you know, when I think specifically about the Cuba-Canada, you know, game, we would go from playing very well against Cuba, a lesser opponent, and then not playing well against Canada, which we weren't happy with. There shouldn't be that much of a discrepancy in performances that we want to improve on. Um, I think we realized that we were able to take a look at um, you know, some of the weaknesses or some of the things we still need to develop. You know, the Mexico game was a good example, um, the friendly game. We, we, want, we were intent on, on building from the, our goalkeeper. We knew they were going to high press. And I think we showed some weaknesses in the area that can be improved. Um, another another um, point would be, I think, there were too many go there were too many times where we were losing the game one nothing and they score a late second goal and you know talking about the importance of of not giving up goals especially when you're down again always being able to stay in the game right if it's a one goal game you're always in the game and giving up late goals we did that a number of times which we weren't happy with which we weren't happy with at all um, those are some things that come to mind uh, when i think about w when we were trailing we're, we trailed in six games this year. We've only come back in one of them. That's something we want to improve on. Conversely, we led in 12 games, and we've only gotten scored on once when we've, when we've been, um, or we've only got equalized once in, in the 12 games. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, as a fan, 
like you were talking, like we want to see uh, progress, right? And so uh, the next question is like more on what are your ultimate objectives for the, the national team? Um, and what are those steps that you're going to take to get to that, uh, those objectives? And, and as fans, how can they see that there's being progress on those different steps as, uh, as the year goes on and your tenure goes on? It's, I understand where fans are coming from. I really do. It, it's, a, it's a fine line. Um, you know, it, it, there's a lot of reaction after a single event, right? So, you know, we, we lose to Mexico 3 nothing in New York, and there's been no progress throughout the year. Nothing, right? That, that's the way it feels as a fan. But when we look at the game, we're able to analyze the game and say, okay, first 20 minutes of this game, they were all over the place. You know, they're trying to chase us, and we're getting nice breakthroughs, and we're, you know, it, it's not all together there, but there's a lot of positive that gives us as coaches um, a body to say, okay, this got, we're improving as a group. We're making progress as a group. So when I, when I think about the year, when I think about um, group format, you know, uh, which is similar to qualifying format, having to turn around after the disappointing game against Canada and having to get a result um, in two games in Orlando and in Cayman Islands was important for this group. That's a step growing towards um, forming a competitive group, forming a, a group that knows what it takes to be successful. So, uh, you know, that I think we've made progress. And when I think about the style of play in general, guys have a good understanding of what we're looking to do. A lot of the goals we scored are a direct result of moves that we talk about, training exercises that, we, that we've worked on, the movements behind the back line from the wingers, the passes from the fullbacks, the runs in the box from a number of guys. This is exactly what we've been planning. So the guys are making a progress in that area. You know, there's one thing to keep in mind, and... and um, you know, I think it gets glossed over is that this has been a younger team than we've traditionally played. We're in a, we're in a stage of developing a team and developing a team takes time. Um, you know, when you talk about the talent, you know, the concentration of talent, it's a lot of young players. You know, we're talking about 21 and under guys that have been playing. Reggie Cannon, Christian Pulisic, Weston McKenney, Josh Sargent. You know, these are young players that that need to continue to, to grow and need to be given the space to grow. So speaking to fans um, and what to look out for, what, what would be your message to fans here now and into 2020? We have a huge year ahead of us. 2020 is going to be, I mean, 2020 is a year. You know, there's not going to be, um, it's a it's a year that we're going to have the ability to make a big impact both on, on Nations League, on qualifying, on friendlies, on getting guys experience. It's a big year for us, and I think that um, you know the most helpful thing is for fans to say, okay, we're getting behind this team. We understand where this team is at. We've seen enough that we're we're proud of this team. We're proud of the resiliency of this team, and we're going to get behind them because we know what a crucial year this is. Six qualifiers. You know, we have a chance to put a real good dent in, in qualification in 2020. Nice. Well, um, those are the questions I have uh, today. I really appreciate your time. I hope this is an ongoing sort of conversation and I hope it's, we get to see you at uh, some of our events. You can get uh, uh, your passion and, and your message to fans at uh, different events and throughout the year. So I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you for taking the time to come here. We know, I know that you took time out of your schedule, and I want you to know that you know, the coaching staff, the team, you know, appreci appreciates everything you guys do. And um, you know, we feel like we can only be successful with you guys behind us. We feel it's a partnership. Appreciate that. All right, thanks. You bet. Thank you.